Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. Mountain. And today I'm going to talk to you uh, about a bunch of subjects again, but one of the first subjects I'm going to talk about is uh, something that was asked in the comments. And he asked me, how can you train so often as a natural bodybuilder? How can you train so much? So this is a common misconception. A lot of times people think that if you're training with higher frequency, that you're doing the exact same volume or the exact same intensities of weight. But that's not true. You are changing the weights as you go, changing the intensities and also working with moderately low volume. You're not working with 20 or 30 sets per body part. You're usually doing about three to six sets per body part. And of course, this also might go down even if you're doing super high frequency type training, right? So I have all these programs on my website. I outline the sets and reps. I outline the intensities. I outline the volume. So uh, if, if you want a template, I do have them on my website. Now, I'm not saying that they're set in stone. I mean, it's just a certain way that I go about organizing things in a way that I found to be very effective. But in, in the end, understand that if you are doing a higher frequency type program, obviously it does mean that you're doing smaller workouts in order to compensate for the higher frequency, right? Because obviously if you blast something to death and you do 20, 30 sets for a body part, you know, you're going to need a little bit more time to recover from that. And the whole argument is what type of responder are you? Are you a person that gets the most result by doing massive trauma to the body and then the body recovers better that way? Or are you a person that responds best to light stimulation that eases the body into growth? And I call this the callus principle. If you dig a ditch every day, right, you're digging, you know, you're, you're going to get some nice calluses on there. But if you only do it once a week, all you do is tear your hands up every time you do it. So it's the same type of principle really, but it's applied to muscles. And, and I noticed that my body seems to respond best that way, instead of me just doing massive trauma to the body and then waiting four or five days for it to recover. Because I found that when I did that, I found that I got out of shape by the time I got back around to the muscle again. I know it seems weird, but because of doing so much volume for each body part, it would take me three days to come back around to that body part again. So I found frequency was the foundation on which I had to plan my training around. It wasn't about, can I, you know, kill the muscle to the nth degree by doing a million sets. It was more about how do I maintain this frequency first and foremost, and then build my training around that. So, yeah, this, this is the answer to it, right? You can train more frequently or less frequently. It just depends on the volume. And obviously if you're using maximal poundages, right? You obviously don't want to be doing maximal poundages every time you go in the gym. Although there are some people that, that have done that, uh, but I'm not one of them. I'm, I'm not one of those people that can do maximal poundages every time. So, uh, so there's a big part of you figuring out what type of body you have. But as a general rule, I find easing your body into gains is a better overall strategy and then doing super intense workouts here and there interlaced in, but not every single day. Like if every single day is super intense uh, and you're just going intense, even when the body doesn't feel like going intense, sometimes it can cause some problems, but you know what? It's just, it's just a big experiment. You know what I'm saying? And I found higher frequency, lower volume worked the best for me. That's, that's really all I can say. So yeah, let's do a set of bench. I already did a couple sets of warm up with one plate. I'm just going to do this. I just did. And, and on this note, actually, funny enough, on this note, I did walking lunges yesterday and I only did three sets, but you know how you get the heart pumping pretty good with walking lunges. And then today to start my workout, I did three sets of squats with 315. And, uh, and yeah, uh, burn, burn, major burn, uh, pretty, pretty good, pretty good workout but I only did three sets, right? I wasn't doing like hundred sets for legs. But the reason why I do this is that sometimes when I'm a tiny bit sore, if I work the muscle again the next day, it seems like it shreds something up in a certain way and I get a different type of quality of pump. So as long as that soreness isn't in the joints and stuff, uh, you're feeling it in the muscle, it, it really does cause uh, an exciting sort of way of stimulating the muscle. Uh, you don't do it all the time, but just once in a while, I find that it's, it's really effective. So yeah, that's why I did that. So I started my workout with legs. So all the blood's left my upper body here. So I got to get the blood back in here. Uh, but sometimes when you train legs, you lose the pump in the upper body. That's kind of normal. You know, the blood's got to go somewhere. And usually the legs can hold a lot of blood 
And uh, if you traumatize them with some leg workout, then the body sometimes doesn't want to give it up. It's like, no, no, we're going to keep the blood, the blood pooled in the legs, you know? So yeah, let's do a set here. Nice and easy. Now, after talking about a certain technique in a previous video, and this technique was uh, doing the pre-exhaustion method with an isolation movement and then moving to a compound, right? And I talked about the benefit of doing that from time to time. I had somebody in the comments say, oh man, I'm, I'm doing everything wrong. I've been doing it wrong all these years. I've been doing the compound first and then moving on to the isolations. And I'm going to say that's not wrong. It's just different. Right. And depending on what's going on with your body at the time will depend on what you feel stimulates the muscle the best. Now I talk about another technique called the pump and stretch principle and the pump and stretch principle is based on pumping up the muscle as much as possible and then stretching it. Now you might be using a compound movement to get that pump and then moving on to the isolation to stretch it out after you get that pump. And that also is an effective way to hit that area. Now, depending on the individual, right, depending on their situation will depend on which technique they find seems to work the best at this possible time. And, and again, like I said, your body's an ever changing thing. Sometimes in the future, you'll find that maybe one technique serves you great. And then it's time to graduate to a different technique for a period of time and see if that works. So it's not about having to, uh, you know, only apply one method. Uh, that is not necessarily the truth, right? Because there's lots of different ways to stimulate the muscle and your goal as a bodybuilder is to try to stimulate that muscle from a lot of different angles and see which one bears the biggest amount of fruit, right? You know, so for me with bench presses, right? You notice I don't touch my chest. Well, the reason why is because I overextend my shoulders when I do that because of my shoulder dislocation injury. And all it does is tweak my front delts and put extra stress on there, but I don't get any more chest work from that. But when I'm doing incline flies, I'll stretch down quite a bit more. So right now I will do this. I'll pump up the pecs and get a good, good little pump here. And then I'll move on to some incline flies for fun and then stretch it out. So I'm using a version of the pump and stretch principle for the pecs. Pump and stretch principle for the pecs. Pump and stretch principle for the See, say that 10 times fast. All right, let's do a set. I'm, I'm stalling here. Nice. So I did a couple of good warm-up sets with 225 and uh, they're not really warm-up sets. They're excessively warm-up because take the set pretty close to failure. So I wouldn't really recommend warming up that way. Really, if you really intend on hitting a PR because you're kind of exhausting yourself right away, but I just feel like doing that. I like to err on the side of caution and warming up. So I, I don't really care. I've, I've got nobody to prove anything to. Hey, nobody to prove anything to. And I just put 275 on the bar. So we'll see how that feels and uh, yeah, go from there. Mountain. Gee, that felt a hell of a lot better than I thought it was gonna.
strange. See, you, know, you can't predict these things, you know what I'm saying? You just can't predict it. Now I'm probably gonna do one more set of this. Uh, but yeah, you know, if I was gonna put in a category of what the three most important muscle groups are to train for natural bodybuilders, that would be automatically the chest, the back, and the legs, right? Because when you're training your chest and back, you are getting some arm work in there, technically speaking, right? And uh, if you're doing leg work, I mean, you're getting a lot of lower back, you're getting a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the upper back even too, with Romanian deadlifts or, or deadlifts or variations of the deadlift. And, uh, and of course, with bent over rows, you're getting a lot of the posterior chain and stuff as well. But those would be the three basic muscles. And there's a million different exercises for each muscle, of course. But those are the three basic muscles you want to concentrate on overall. I mean, because all the other muscles do help, you know, when you, when you are training those muscles, right? So this is where uh, there was a comment made the other day where natural bodybuilding is just basically powerlifting. Well, not really. Powerlifting is not centered just on the three muscle groups. It's centered on three specific lifts, which one could argue is, you know, they're pretty effective lifts. They hit most of the body when it comes down to uh, stimulating muscle growth and stuff. But of course, because there's no room for individual movement patterns, that's where I would disagree because elite bodybuilders find their right recruitment pattern. And of course, they also do isolation work and a lot of auxiliary work as well in order to hit certain areas from different angles of attack and so forth, where the power lifter is more concentrated in how does he get the bench press, the deadlift or the squat uh, heavier? How does he lift more weight with those movements? You know, sometimes he might do isolation work for that, but that's not the primary reason why he's doing it. Where a bodybuilder will do the isolation work for hypertrophy reasons. And yes, there may be some transfer of strength, but they're not so worried about the coordination around the big three lifts, right? Uh, that's what powerlifters are doing. They're, they're trying to refine their coordination. And in some cases, not even try to put on muscle because they don't want to go up a weight class, depending on who you talk to. So it's just a, a much different, different sport. Although there is some crossover, it's not the same thing. Uh, because if you're thinking like a powerlifter, uh, you know, we, we've seen it lots of times where a lot of guys that come from powerlifting, they go into bodybuilding. Yeah, they may have some strengths and stuff, but a lot of times they'll have some glaring weaknesses. Uh, because they'll focus more on the weight they're lifting rather than actually isolating certain muscle groups. And a lot of times, you know, the standard sort of thing, you'll see a guy that bench presses really well, but his chest is not necessarily as developed as it needs to be to be in balance. Or maybe the arms are lagging behind. A guy might have a big back and good chest, but his arms aren't necessarily developed. So, you know, bodybuilding is really a different sport when it comes down to powerlifting, although strength does matter. Of course, you know, you want to get stronger and build in uh, muscular endurance as well in each of the muscle groups and that's how you will get bigger overall but you're, you're just not concentrating it just on only three lifts that's that's the whole point <clears throat>
uh, being impeccable to what is happening on that particular day uh, because it changes, right? And uh, that's one thing I've seen, you know, after 36 years of doing this stuff, right? Uh, it's, it's one of those things where sometimes the body feels a certain way. And I know you guys know this. I know that sometimes you wake up and sometimes your back is tight and you don't know why, or your knees are tight or your neck or your shoulder, like whatever. The body's always having all this stuff going on, right? There's always like tight areas and stuff. And, and yeah, you can stretch and stuff, but first you have to be aware of what's tight before you know what to stretch, right? Or whether you should get some massage or whether you're out in one of your minerals, right? You're out on magnesium or calcium or iodine or what, like any of these things can play a massive role in, in creating havoc in your system and stuff too. That's why nutrition is so important. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's a whole other ball of wax. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're always trying to figure that out, but, but really paying attention is the first step. So yeah, now I'm going to go to the 70 pound dumbbells here, do a set and uh, maybe I'll finish it off with some presses just to take it into a deeper level of failure. I don't feel like I need to go heavy on the presses today. I, I don't feel like I need to go heavy. I, I, I pretty much burn myself out on the, on the bench there. So now I'm just gonna do some isolation and then burning it out, you know? You get some sort of pumpy and lumpy feel. Mountain. good uh, that felt really good actually I don't know just once I come to once I come to here I'm good when I come from here to here it just feels like uh, all the tension just leaves the pack right so that's why you see me just kind of lock it in you know what I mean I'm like Maverick from Top Gun you know what I'm saying but it's lock on missiles lock and then I don't know what happens after that but I just lock on yeah Okay, that was a good set, right? I, I was so far into failure that I couldn't really do any reps with the 70 pounders for presses after I'd finished doing uh, the fly. So yeah, it's, it's a great, uh, I don't know, they feel great. I don't know, sometimes you'll go through these stages where one muscle group or one particular exercise specifically feels really great to you. And you know what, just follow that. You deserve to be happy when you're training as well. It doesn't always have to be just like grin and bear it, you know? like it is with walking lunges sometimes. You know, the thing is, is that uh, you're allowed to enjoy the exercises. And, and I think the speeding through the exercises, trying to get to the end, is probably one of the problems with any goal, right? Once you start to look towards the goal more so than make this moment the goal, you sometimes miss a lot of things. You start to shut down your awareness of what's happening here and now in this moment. So. Uh, anytime you're doing any exercise, just make sure that you're paying attention to that. My battery's almost running out, so... Uh, in my body as well as my audio pack. So yeah, that's, uh, I got a good pump from that. Pretty good pump and uh, yeah, in the end, you know, experiment around, like I always say, and find out, 
how to get those tensions on the muscle. Like me, the hybrid fly, you know, with the elbows bent and stuff, put the stress more on the pec than on the delt or the elbow joint and stuff. So, you know, you might be different, right? So play around with different variations of the fly and see what's right for you. But one thing I will say is don't extend down too far because that is really hard on the shoulder joint and the pec tendons. And obviously you don't want to injure those areas, right? So, but anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope this workout helps you out. I hope your training is going awesome. And if you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalgallantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patient supporters and take care for now. Mountain. <laughs>